Okay, so uh, did anybody get the note yesterday? Yes. This, this Sunday, this service may be one of the most important moments in the history of Harbor Church and maybe in our individual lives as well. I've never said that before. This is really, really important. And, uh, and then, you know, I woke up this morning and I went, why did you send that out? Now everybody has big expectations. And all you can do is go out in disappointment. <laughs> but I still believe it. I still believe it, so, so hang with me. Uh, we've been looking at uh, the five choices that shape our lives, right? And I'm not very good at math, so I may keep this going for another four or five weeks. Because, I, you know, there are only five choices, but I may have nine or ten of them to go. But um, uh, we come to one today that I believe um, if we make this choice, it will literally change our life, our relationships, and our church community. It's that, it's that important. Um, and so I'm going to use, uh, I want you to look at the scripture, uh, Matthew 16, um, which is the same one we looked at last week in terms of uh, Jesus' question to Peter, who do people say that I am? And they said, oh, you're a prophet, oh, you're a teacher. And they said, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? All right? And then this conversation continues. So um, beginning in verse 13, this will catch you up. We'll get a little ramp up here. Um, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, you're the Christ, you're the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by people, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you're Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So Lord, teach us. Teach us from your word, and teach us how we might be people of your kingdom, and that we might um, use the, the keys of your kingdom in our daily lives. We need you, we love you, and uh, we're open to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I uh, should tell you in my testimony, I was not saved from a life of great sin and mass murder and things like that. Um, I wish that I would have had that as my testimony because I would have been a speaker on the circuit, you know, going around churches and Sunday night services and talking about how Jesus saved me from all this crime and, uh, and waste and everything like that. Instead, I was born into a missionary kid family, you know, where we were in Africa, the mission field, and, um, and then came home and they stuck me in Bethany Baptist Elementary School because that's where returning missionary kids went to trust the public schools, you know. So, like, we hadn't had enough. So, anyways, I went through that and... Uh, and then when I was um, 10 years old, I joined the church, Wilshire Presbyterian Church. I was the youngest member in the history of the church. And I had to go before the board of elders and recite the Apostles' Creed by memory. You people have it easy since we don't have any membership. <laughs> you just show up. So I had it tough. I did that and uh, joined the church. And, uh, and then um, faith, I was a church kid. I was a faithful church kid going through and... Um, and so I thought, what is it that God saved me from? When Jesus took over my life, what did he save me from? And I realized, and I'm so grateful for this, he saved me from being religious. He kept me, he lifted me out of church and churchiness and said, no, that's not going to be you. Even though you've got all the credentials, you know, you've got the DNA, that's not going to be you. You have absolutely no religious instincts anymore, and you can't carry on a conversation with religious people, and, you know. So yesterday, when I went to the Catholic supply store downtown, Kaufman's, Kaufman. 
they were so nice and, uh, and they, they thought that I was probably a little slow and a burden to my family because I didn't seem to know any of it. And, <laughs> You know, I was over here, to, and I'm trying to, you know, learn, you know, what the difference in candles are. And, and this, this lady took about an hour to show me all the different candles. We got Russian 20s, by the way. I don't know what that means, but, but I felt so out of it. And I thought, oh, this must be what people feel like when they visit the harbor. <laughs> We've got all our little customs. Well, you didn't bring a donut in? Well, then you got to go out and get one and bring it in. That's the way we roll, you know. And, uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> And uh, so, but then as a pastor, I've spent my life, guess what? Among pagans? Not really. Mostly among good church folk. In church. All my life. And I don't have any instincts for that. And, uh, but the thing that uh, captivated me is that earlier in, in Matthew, I think uh, chapter 4, um, when Jesus begins his ministry, you all know this, but he begins his ministry, so leaving Nazareth, he went, lived at Capernaum, and uh, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And then he calls his first disciples to come and follow. His message, when he began his ministry, was not at all about go be churchy, go get more religious. It was about the kingdom of God is here, it's very near to you, and you can be part of that. That was the message. And, uh, and the kingdom of God is what? Well, the kingdom is wh where the king rules, right? We've talked about that many times. Wherever the king has authority, where the king has influence, where the king's priorities become uh, our priorities. And so the kingdom of God is where God rules, where he has authority, where he, where he has influence and direction in our lives, right? So, how do we live, and this is going to be our choice, okay? How do we live as kingdom people rather than being good churchmen and church women and church kids? How do we do this? How do we get saved from being church people and become people in, of the kingdom of God? That's a choice that we make. And, um, and when, uh, when Jesus is talking to Peter and Peter says, I know who you are, you're, you're the Christ. He goes, okay, here are the keys to the kingdom. And, and here's what you do with them. You can either bind up people, make them more uptight, more rigid, more uncomfortable, or you can loose them, right? Untie them. They've got enough stuff binding them up. Untie them. Let them go. And so I've been thinking about our, our, our ministry here together. And, uh, and I had some conversations uh, this week, and it suddenly hit me. What's the motto of this church on the sign? Say it. Wow, that's a, I, that must be done in Greek. I didn't, didn't understand. It's like me with my Spanish classes. They go really fast. What is it again? For the adventure of spirit. That was the motto. And, and Joe, we talked about that when we were first thinking about the church. Uh, Joe was an entrepreneur, and I went and saw him, and, and I said, What's this church going to be? And he said, John, what's this church going to be? Just another church? And I went, I don't want that. And so he said, well, why don't we have something for the adventurous spirit? And I went, I want that. And so we started out, right? Guess what? After a while, where's the adventure? This is like church now. Y'all come, except you get a donut. You, know? <laughs> you get that donut, that's important. But... Uh, and I'm afraid that we're on the brink of becoming a church. And that's scaring the stew out of me right now. Because we're going to be just another church sitting here around the corner from Dick's Burgers. Whoopee. That's good, but it's not all that it could be. And we'll miss being kingdom people. Now, as a pastor with a lot of years of experience... Like 35 years I've been a, a pastor. I like 
telling you all what to do. Because I'm good at it. I have brilliant ideas. I have creative ideas. And, and I would love to go to each one of you and sit down and say, here's what your ministry's going to be, and here's what you're going to do in the church, da, 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 right? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't you love that? <laughs> Got a bunch of rebels here. <laughs> I didn't get that overwhelming. Yes, Pastor, tell us what you want us to do in the church. Yeah. <laughs> and then I find that God brings people like you here. That what? You got your own ideas. You got your own dreams. You have your own priorities. You don't care what I want you to do. You're going to do your own stuff. And I thought, well, you better get used to it because in the kingdom of God, it's about unleashing people. It's about untying them, unbinding them, loosening them. It's not about getting them tied up tighter and lined up straighter, right? Which really, you know, makes my job miserable at that point because I have no control and you're all out doing stuff. And, uh, and then some of you will go, well, this church is out doing all this stuff, doing everything, being creative, being the adventurous spirit. What happened to our church where everything was orderly and nice and we knew, you know, where we were sitting and everything. And, um, We'll have to live with that. But um, there's a there's a little I, I was thinking about um, church and I think if we're gonna be a church for the adventurous spirit. Do you ever go on that was it river raft trips? No. Is this cool? Do the white water trips? I, we used to do that, and we get you know a bunch of people in the raft, and there's usually a guide who's not in the front. Actually, the guide's in the back, <laughs> where it's safer, and the guide is is telling us, you know, okay, you know, if we're going to go left, then one side of the boat has to back up with their oar, and the other half has to go forward with their. Am I is that right? Am I doing? Am I saying it right? Okay, and then they switch them, and so you're you have to listen to the guide because if you're going forward with your oar, but everybody else is going backwards, it's a it's a mess, and. and you could flip over in the river, and that's usually not a positive. And, uh, and every once in a while, when it gets really dangerous, the guide yells at us, and we grab the rope, because that means we're probably going to bounce right out. You know? So just stop even rowing at this point and just hang on. That's, to me, I think, what the church is like when, it, when, when we're kingdom people, right? When we understand the, the kingdom of heaven and, and what God's doing in us, and it's an adventure. And sometimes, you know, we got to listen to the guide. We've got to do our part in it. Everybody in the boat has to row. There's no, there's no passengers on, on a river raft trip. And um, sometimes just hang on. That's all you can do. But I discovered that my wife really likes cruising. <laughs> She didn't like, we fought it every vacation, you know, for 40 years because uh, I would, she likes everything in order and Mark, da 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 you know. She would pick up that pin. Somebody did. And, uh, <laughs> and so um, she wanted to know, like, where we're staying, where we're eating, are we going to be safe, you know, how, you know, all that stuff. And I would, like, show up somewhere and go, well, let's look around and see what's going on, you know. And it just drove her wacky, which then turned into conflict, which, you know, okay. So we went on a cruise once, and, and at the end of the week, she said, I like that. Note to self, she likes that. <laughs> and so we did a lot of that. Okay, so now on a cruise, anybody ever go on a cruise? Or watch the Love Boat reruns? <laughs> That's the same, it's all the same. Okay, now on a cruise ship, you don't have to row, first of all. Okay, you don't have to row, you don't have to listen to the guide, and you don't ever have to hang on. If you did, that'd be kind of a bad cruise, you know? And so you got your captain stewing, and you have your program director, and you have your uh, ship's doctor, you know? And um, everybody, uh, and you have the room stewards who come, they're invisible, and then they, you come back, and your room's all fixed up, you know, and they're gone. You never see them. They're mysterious, you know? And uh, a great service at the table. You feel like you're your superstar, and all that. And entertainment, you know? And uh, you're entertained and, and fed, you know, the midnight dessert buffet. You know, is there ever a wrong time for a dessert buffet, I'm wondering, but anyway, um, so, and I thought, now that's more like what the church is, right? 
You come in here and you make sure you get what you need, you make sure your coffee's fresh and you have a comfortable seat and you're entertained a little bit and everything's working for you. And if you don't like something, you know who to complain to, to get it taken care of. That's church, right? Well, I gotta tell you, I am not Captain Steubing anymore. <laughs> I, I quit as Captain Steubing. Um, there's a third image I want you to have. This is, we're all on the, this is the church, okay? We're all on the cruise ship. We get out to sea, and suddenly, in the middle of the night, the entire 800-member crew is airlifted off the boat. And we wake up in the morning, and our room service is not there, and our room doesn't get cleaned, and we're huffing, but we go around, and pretty soon we realize there are no room stewards, there is no kitchen crew, there is no uh, entertainment, there, and so we gather in the big uh, princess lounge, you know, on the Lido deck, and uh, we get and we go. Who's in charge here? What do we do? And you grumble. I paid four hundred bucks for this, or four thousand doesn't either way. And uh, you're still grumbling, and they realize that if anything's going to happen, it's up to us. We have to do this. So, you know, John, you've got a doctorate in theology from Fuller Seminary. I guess you're the ship doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally unqualified. Um, somebody else is going to have some gifts and they can do some entertainment tonight and dance on the stage. And some other people are going to have to be room stewards. And some other people are going to have to steer the ship. And some other people are going to have to fix the mechanical stuff. And boy, I hope we got enough people to do this because that's the only way we're going to survive on this. And that is what the church is like in the kingdom of God. Nothing is done for us. We have to do it ourselves because it's God living in us, empowering us, and then sending us out and, and giving us the ability to do what he's calling us to do. Do you believe that? Amen. See, I think that when we're a church that's a, that's the kingdom of God, that we are the most important and most significant force for God's good in this world that there is. And when we're the cruise ship church, we suck. I mean that in the most positive way. <laughs> so I was thinking today, we're going to have a, a kingdom challenge. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you, and this is a choice you have to make. If you'll take the kingdom challenge, then you will, uh, between now and Palm Sunday, I want you to creatively come up with a way to do ministry that's going to bless people, that's going to have a, a kingdom uh, purpose, that's going to be in Jesus' name, and it can't be like... Um, I'll be supportive of the Red Cross. You know, that, that's not a kingdom thing. So what we've got here is um, a stack of $100 bills. Oh, you found my money. <laughs> yeah, I found Eric's money. <laughs> In fact, well, the person who lost all these $100 bills form a double line over here. <laughs> that was great, actually. I'm sorry. Don't, don't let that go to your head. I don't want to hear that again. <laughs> so what happened was, about 10 years ago, we were down in California. Sheila was there. We worked together. And this guy made an appointment. I didn't know him. He came into my office, and he said, um, okay, a Pastor, I want to do something kind of weird here. I don't go to your church. You don't know me, but... Um, I want to give you uh, many thousands of dollars for you to hand out to your congregation on Sunday in exchange for them taking it and using it for some kind of creative kingdom ministry and have them come back and report what they've done. And, and the only strings on this is I'd like to be invited to be there when they come back and report so I could just hear the stories. I kept thinking, oh, this is some kind of weird thing. This is a cult, you know. I don't know what this is. What's this going to cost me down the road? You know, I'm doing that, you know. And, and he was true to his word. And he just said, you know, I just believe that. He said, I've been to seven churches in town, and they've all turned me down. You're the last one. And I went, you'd give me like $10,000, $100 bills to go do that and just hand them out? Yeah. That's it. And so I was thinking about it this week. And I thought, if I could just get someone to come into my office that I don't know and give me a chunk of dough, we could do this here. <laughs> so, we've got um, 
$5,000 in $100 bills. And all you have to do is put up your hand and say that you'd be willing to take the challenge and that you would, uh, and you could do it as a couple if you're married, if you, if you have kids, you can do it as a family, or you could do it individually if you don't really talk to each other. You know, uh, you can team up and do this together. You can, you can parlay it. The, the deal is there are no strings for what you do with it, except it has to be for a kingdom purpose. It has to be in Jesus' name, and you got to bless somebody with it. And so uh, you can't go and give it to good ministries like World Vision. Oh, I gave it to World Vision, and they're using it for good purpose. That is not it. And you can't, on Palm Sunday, when we come back and have our reports, you can't come in and say, oh, John, I couldn't think of the right thing to do, so, Pastor, you know, here's your 20 bucks back. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that, okay? You got to use it, got to do it, and, uh, and your ministry may fail. It doesn't matter. Come back and talk about how it failed or how it succeeded. So, okay, so who'd like to take the kingdom challenge? You do it? Okay, Baron's gonna do it. You're gonna do it, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Oh. You want a couple? He wants a couple of them. Oh, you're gonna do it as a couple. Oh, there we go. You want one? Okay, hang on, hang on. Wine's gonna do it. All right, anybody else? Come on, here we go. You got it? And then this also doesn't mean taking your friends out to Valentine's Day dinner. You know, that, that's going to be Over here, let me come over here. You want one, Life? You do it? You're going to do it as a family? I'll do a parlay, Life, with it. I want him to have his own. He can, he can parlay. Here we go. Anybody else? Still Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You want to share or you want another? <laughs> You're on a roll. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Together or separate? They're going to do this. Wow, there's a married couple that's going to do this together. Isn't that unusual? You want to? You want it separate or together? Sure. Duty, you want to take the challenge? You don't want it? No? Okay. Anybody else? You want a separate one? Yes. Yeah, pretty good. You guys want one? On Palm Sunday? For like a month. You better take the money. Take the money. Come on, there we go. Don't miss the item. Take one more time. What? Oh, I thought she was talking to me. What? <laughs> you're, not, you're talking through me. <laughs> you can do the kingdom of God on the road? On the road. Joe. Cool. Anybody? Phil, you're doing it? You don't have to do whatever you want. No? Pressure. Pressure. I'm twisting arms now. Who we got over here? Okay, Alex. Chris, do you need to tell us what we <laughs> yeah, he thinks that he does. Did I give you one? Yeah, you just gave me one. Tim, you want one? Or are you going to use the family? I mean, I'm just taking the family. Family one? Okay. Here we go. Let me around here. Okay, here we go. This is exciting. I, I get so nervous this morning. You want two? Why, I gave you one. Why do you think I don't remember? <laughs> Oh, you're going to give it to Sunday school teacher. Okay. Anybody? 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 Okay, we still got a few more if you want. Anybody we're missing? Okay. Take that kingdom challenge. Here we go. You bet. Okay. Anybody else? I'm so excited. I'm so nervous about this. I got to. I usually don't walk around. I, I, yesterday, last night, I was thinking, Kylie's out of town. There's the Indian Casino. You know, this could be stewardship. You know, who would know, really? You know. Okay, if you think if you didn't take it and you change your mind, still some for you. Okay. And now the deal is, be creative. Think of ways to use that, multiply it, bless people, do something creative in ministry, and. Um, I think Palm Sunday, when we come back and we report what happened, how we used it, what we did, I think that that's going to be one of the most exciting services we can have. It'll be the most significant. Oh no, that's we've already done that one. Okay, but 
what this does is it says, go ahead and be unleashed. Go ahead and do it. Uh, don't let money be an excuse. You got a hundred bucks, go do something with it. And, and you don't have to say, John, is this the right way to use it? Because I'd probably say no. <laughs> you know, that's just the way I am. And, um, but I think that what this can do is tangibly remind us as a church that we're going to be kingdom people. And we're not going to be cruise ship people. And we're going to be out there. And the ministry that's happening is not going to be what goes on in here. The ministry is what happens with you all out there. That's the exciting thing about this to me. And uh, I can't wait to hear the stories. So that's it. Um, I know some of you were hoping that there would be something really good, like a guest speaker or something. But <laughs> no, you just got me. But oh, yeah, I thought I, you were going to sing a solo. And that would be <laughs> Okay, give me the money back. That, you know, right. <laughs> okay, and if between now and uh, Palm Sunday, if you think of something and, uh, and you were sharing the money, but somebody else is doing their idea and you've got a different idea, come see me. I've got, I got a pocket full more for you. Okay? All right. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you send us out into your world and into your kingdom, and we thank you that you are alive in us and that you love us and you gift us and you deploy us in ministry. And so uh, we don't know what's ahead. We don't know what to expect. We don't know how people respond. But we know that you're there ahead of us and uh, help us to see folks through your eyes and hear them through your ears and sense uh, what you would do in their lives. And may we be uh, transformed people because of this. In Jesus' name. Amen.